So here I've got three Cyrus DAB8 receivers and uh, the one in the bottom there, it's, it looks like it's powered up, it's got the green light but we've got no display, we've also the uh, power button here seems to have detached itself. So this one's dead, I need to figure that one out. The report with the middle one was that the display was like super dim and barely, barely possible to read it. But actually, I can. The display here is okay, or it's readable at least. Um, so I need to go and check with the owner what what their expectations are on that. And the top one was for reference. It, it should be a working unit. Uh, and what the request was here was to make one working black one at least out of this combination here. Uh, the owner wanted a, a black one for the system, so that's the plan. Um, but I'm a bit puzzled about this middle one at the moment because it, it looks readable at least, so there may not be too much wrong with that. But I think we'll tackle the bottom one first. We'll look at this one that's completely dead and uh, see what we can find out there. Here we are inside then. It's the first time I've seen one of these, so it's, uh, it's a, new, a new venture here. Uh, we've obviously got a radio module under this shield enclosure here. Uh, it's an SD card for uh, actually storing material, and recording material. Um, and then we've got an optical output section here. This is what this guy's doing. And some audio output, just the op amp circuitry going on down there. Bunch of power supply. One thing that comes, you know, the first thing that I saw here was actually we're coming in from the mains and we've got this common mode choke here and then these uh, these uh, terminals are all exposed you know we go, we go to the length of making sure these are all uh, insulated but then we've got these exposed things here so that's a bit questionable what I see right away though is that uh, I've got a capacitor here that's bulging and then this one down here is bulging as well uh, it's a funny arrangement, we've got these bridge rectifiers going on down here and they're using discrete diodes that are sitting way up off the board and I really don't know what the reasoning for that is, it's a kind of bit of a mess really. Um, now if I turn on my DMM, you know we should have DC in the output of these uh, bridges um, but we can see that capacitor there is bulging so if I measure the output, the, the, uh, there's AC there, and I've got about 3 volts of AC on the output of that uh, rectifier, which isn't really what I'd expect. Uh, if I go and look at the negative side, it's down, yeah, see it's dropping right down, so I'm down about 0 0.03 volts, so that's kind of more like it. Uh, so, something far wrong there. Um, and we'll get the board out and we'll we'll replace these and maybe look at some of these other capacitors. Hopefully that's all that's wrong here and we'll get this thing up and running again. It's really easy for this board to come out then. Uh, it's not like our usual amplifier arrangement where we've got all the nasty stuff on the the uh, heat sinks there. Uh, so nice and clean. Uh, so that should just lift away and then we're we're free. So. Let's have a closer look at this. We've got 5 volt regulator, 3.3 volt regulator, and then there's a couple of 8 volt regulators which will be for the analog side here, and then there's another 5 volt might be for the uh, logic on the front panel etc. Or uh, maybe these guys are for the radio and then that would be for the general digital on the front panel. Um, but uh, I guess our first job is we'll get these capacitors out, we'll measure these other ones, just see what kind of state we're in. So I've not taken anything out yet, but uh, just measuring the ESR on these, uh, there's the bank of four capacitors there, including the one that uh, was bulging, and they all read good, which is interesting. This may be another one of these cases where there's a few parts in parallel on the board, and even though it reads good here, the actual part is, uh, I mean, it's clearly faulty because we can see it bulging. Same with this one here. Uh, reads, you know, not ridiculous for something that's got such a bulge on it. So uh, we'll just go through it around the board and uh, check the rest, take these guys out. We'll measure them out of the board as well, see what they look like there. 
So the ESR didn't read too badly out the board either, but we're measuring capacitance here. Here's a thousand micro, uh, and uh, we can't even measure it. So that's completely dead. Uh, and then the other one that was bulging, yeah, it's here. This is 2200 micro, and reads about 600. Uh, so that's way, way low as well. Uh, I can pair that with a good guy, one of its neighbours. And that's reading two point, just over two millifarads as we expect there. So I'll check the rest of the board and we'll go replace these and hopefully that should be us. Right then, so I've replaced pretty much all the caps on that board there. Um, and uh, so let's see if we've had any luck then just by doing that. If we power up, still get a solid green light there then it goes red and turns off so that's what we should expect now not having a button i need to poke something in here to try and turn it on and there we go good result that's a nice clean display that that's good I'm pretty happy with that hey uh, okay we'll uh we'll take the front panel off now we'll take the take this apart and see if we can uh do something to fix this power button There's nothing much unusual to see on the display board there. Um, there's certainly no adjustments for brightness or the like. Maybe some of these uh, fixed resistors at the side have got something to do with that. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll visit that when we go and look at the other units again. Check these capacitors as well. Um, anyway, I think the on-off button problem is more associated with this uh, part here. So let me have a wee look at that for a bit. So this is a kind of flimsy thing here. We can see the very thin plastic hinge there on the end of this thing and then that sits in here and there's just very little securing that in place and I don't know if this has been damaged in transit or whether it's uh, had an issue before. Uh, so what do I do with that then? And I think what I'm going to do as uh, we'll use some super glue just to initially get that in place there and then I wouldn't really expect that to, to last so then maybe we'll put a wee bit of a thin plastic over here and we'll kind of glue that in place and that's going to have a bit more surface area to act like a hinge so uh, I'll go and have a wee play with that see how we get on so that's worked quite well it's uh, in position there fairly well but of course it's not got any strength um, so what I was thinking to do next is we'll just uh, drip some super glue into the corner there and then we'll put some uh, bicarb in. It's a kind of common trick for building up plastic and things like that. So let's just try that. Decent blob of glue in there. Let's give it a wee spray of activator. That's fine. And then the next thing I was going to do is see, we'll, we'll, we'll get a bit of plastic, cut it out, and we'll just glue it between these two points here and this uh, bit of the internal plastic work here. See how that goes. So let me cut a bit of plastic first and then we'll have a go. So I'm quite impressed by how well that works. Uh, the, you know, I can put quite a bit of pressure on that button now and it uh, feels quite solid. Uh, so I've maybe made it a bit too strong actually, I'm maybe not going to have enough movement in that to turn the thing on. We'll maybe have to pack it out a little bit. But it feels very good. Um, anyway, as I mentioned, we've got, I've cut out a wee piece of uh, plastic here, a very flexible plastic like this. This has got a good spring to it. 
uh, and I used a hole punch. First time I've used a hole punch in years. Paper punch, like. Uh, so we'll we'll just uh, glue that in place there, and uh, that'll be us, I think. So let's just have a go here. This will just give us a bit of backup if that original joint breaks again. So I'll just leave that for a wee while and then we'll put this front panel back together. Okay, so this the bottom unit is the one we've just done with the, the power button uh, and it's working quite well. I've, I've made it a wee bit too robust actually. You have to press quite hard to uh, get the thing to go and I can see in this other unit the, the button's just protruding that a little bit more. Um, but anyway, we, it works okay, uh, and the unit's working fine. Now we're tuning to Radio 2 here, and we can see what we're playing, etc. All pretty good, and display is quite nice and bright there. Uh, if I go back to the other one here, powers up, um, display's quite dull. So when I when I compare these two, then I can see I can see the problem. Uh, that the owner was talking about and what I would say is the silver one and the black one are pretty much they've got an issue um, the issue is more to do with the backlight I think the backlight on this bottom one is much brighter than the top and so uh, I'll go and investigate the backlight in that one now and we'll see uh, see where that takes us hopefully there's just a supply that's not quite right and uh, our uh, LEDs are not being driven as hard as they should be but uh, that's a, a job for tomorrow. We can see the time here, so it's time to go and do some other stuff tonight. So I've been looking at the uh, display brightness uh, issue on this unit here, the worst unit, and what I found was the backlight wasn't being driven as hard on this unit as it was in the other ones. Uh, There's a different value of resistors. The board's the same revision, etc. So I think they've maybe just changed the uh, the values at some point in time uh, and so this uh, you know just wasn't being driven hard enough um, so we've we've fixed that and the other thing I've been looking at is can we change the contrast a little bit can we tweak that up uh, and uh, so I've been I've been playing with that and I've actually got a, a change here uh, it's just an additional resistor and I've got it connected via a switch at the moment and uh, if I toggle that on and off you'll be able to see there just the display just sharpening up just that a little bit and it's actually it's it's much better in reality you know it doesn't come across very well on the camera here but when I'm off axis I, I'm struggling to read it I, and then when I when I flick my switch I can read it without any problem at all so um, I'm going to implement that in the this black unit and also in the silver unit uh, and then that should just take us to quite a comfortable place so I'll go ahead and do that and we'll see what it looks like when it's back together looking at the silver unit here and this unit was supposed to be uh, all in top order uh, but when we look inside we can see that this same capacitor that we saw in the other one that's uh, bulging away there um, so this guy's going to need a recap as well um, and we can see these two heat sinks here and that's 5 volts and 3.3 volts and these guys are getting seriously hot for such a low power unit they're getting very very hot um, and of course we've got all these capacitors around them so their lifetime is going to be limited uh, by that uh, so we'll sort that out uh, now we're going to have to do that all three units are going to need a full recap and then we'll we'll uh, should be good for some time uh, here we are with our three uh, DAB8 receivers and uh, so the, the silver one that's been completely recapped and then we've made some tweaks to the display uh, to try and brighten that up a little bit. The middle one here, this was the one that was uh, a completely dead. Uh, so we've recapped that, we've tweaked the display and also the on-off button's been dealt with there. Uh, and then the bottom one uh, was the one that had 
uh, a dim display and we found that the backlight wasn't being driven uh, as the other units were so we fixed that and also brightened up the display a bit so let's uh, just turn all of these on now we can compare the displays in them and they all they all look pretty much uh, the same here uh, we're all tuned to radio 2 here let's just have a listen to what's going on here we can see the uh, we can see that it's just found the RDS stream here so I've got a bit of Britney Spears going on there so let's turn up the volume see 